Welcome! My name is Vampire Preacher. We're going to be doing the retro wave of X Men Legend figures today. So, our first figure on the docket, because, again, no, never stealth suit Wolverine. Never stealth suit Wolverine. The first figure we're going to be doing instead, though, is Cyclops. Now, this is Cyclops in his X Factor uniform here. Uh, it's got, again, the very retro packaging. Uh, it's got the completely enclosed clamshell so that it's not just one piece of tape away from scalpers opening it up and taking out pieces and swapping it out and then returning it to their various stores. We know who you are. And shame on you. Shame. 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 So... We've already got it partially opened up, but before we get into just pulling them out, let's take a look at what we've got here. So, of course, we've got our very retro packaging with our old-time... I, I love these kind of packages, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, the old card back, our figure in here in its little window pane, or a little clamshell here, if you will. Uh... A blurb here that talks all about him. I'm pretty sure this is a direct just... This is exactly what it said on the original figure from the 90s. And the other figures in this pseudo wave. Um, again, it's just kind of a conglomeration of older figures that have been repainted. Or pieces that they've redone to make it look cool. With one exception, one of these is pretty much a brand new figure for this, and it makes me very happy. But, enough of me talking, let's get into what's inside. So, inside the clamshell for the old Boy Scout here. We, of course, have Cyclops, but we've got... Nah, I'm going to level with you guys. Kobe! I'm going to be super honest with you. I don't like Cyclops. Go ahead, say what you will. Fanboys, don't at me. I don't like Cyclops. I don't. I've never liked him as a character. He's always been kind of boring. There's that. However, the thing that made me get this particular figure is this. They finally did something that they should have been doing for a very long time. They finally gave Cyclops an effect piece. We're going to examine this and how it goes in with the headpiece here later on in this review. But... First things first, let's take a look at what we've been given to work with. So, a neat thing with this figure is, even on this head that doesn't have the uh, optic blast, we've got this little fizzle of uh, his optic energy here. That's really cool. That's, that's a really nice thing. I really wish we got a standard Scott head with that, um, instead of just this, just these two different X-Factor heads. I really wish we got a normal Scott Summers head with that, because I know for me, I want to display this piece with every Cyclops figure I own, which is too many, because again, I don't like it. So. Uh, aside from the really cool detailing here, and we'll get into the really cool detailing on this one as well, let's get into the articulation on him. For our head. We're getting a great range of downward neck articulation, and wow, a really good range of backward neck articulation. Color me surprised. Although, looking at this, if you guys can see... They didn't fully attach my Cyclops' face to the body. 
It's just kind of halfway here. Like, that's... That's so lazy. There's a noticeable gap. Why? I'm gonna have to pop that off and re-glue it myself. Or just use the other head, because it doesn't have that same problem. <laughs> For the shoulder articulation. Better than a T-pose. Huh. At least there's something Scott can do right. He, of course, has the bicep cuts. For the double-jointed elbows. Really? <laughs> if it weren't for that little bit of flash right here at the bottom of his glove, we could get it, ladies and gentlemen. We could get that good flex. But are we? No, no, we are not. We're not even getting close to it. That, that ain't this. Come on. We, of course, have the standard in and out articulation for the hands. Uh, one nice thing is the hand on the left side is actually the two-finger hand that we normally see whenever Scott is firing off an optic blast, so that's nice. That way we can position it. You know, if he had a little bit better uh, articulation here, we could actually position it to make it so that he's firing off that optic blast. But nope. Nope, he just doesn't bend quite enough. Huh. You had one job. You had one job, Hasbro. One job, and that was to make it so he could do this. For our ab articulation, our very frozen ab joint, he can go a great deal forward and a decent degree back. It's not fantastic, but it's decent enough. It's as good as I could expect. We, of course, have a incredibly frozen waist cut. To the point where I can't even get it to move. I'm going to need to use the old hair dryer trick on that. For his hip articulation. That's it. That is what we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen. Which is... Okay. He, of course, has the thigh cuts here. For our double jointed knees, he can go almost all the way back. Again, if it weren't for the flash on the top of the boots here, he'd probably be able to go back even further. He, of course, has boot cuts here. For his ankle articulation, he's got the rocker ankles that go a great degree outward. And, or inward, and a painful degree outward. He can go decently far forward. And can go on point backward. Articulation-wise, he's... Alright. I'm not gonna... Not gonna go calling home about him. There's nothing to write home about. But he's okay. Now, since we do have an extra head and we've got that wonderful effect piece, let's take a look and see just what that looks like on him. And no matter how I try and adjust this, I guess I can kind of get him to... I mean, that's a real roundabout way of doing this, but 
I guess I can kind of make him do the thing with his eye. It's not really there. It's... <laughs> you tried. You tried Hasbro and you failed. You failed bad. You failed miserably. And honestly, you should feel pretty bad about it. The music's bad and you should feel bad. But, this piece, I might actually take one of the extra heads of one of my other Cyclopses and put this on. Actually, I might even take out the whole faceplate and try and do that. Just swap that out. Because this... is a cool look for him. Of everything I can say negative about this figure, this is really neat looking. Actually getting that optic blast effect. Uh, with it coming out the sides of the face here, which is actually very different. Retro edit that out. How about new? It's actually very different on the two different sides, uh, between the two different heads. Uh, there's more of the optic effect coming out the sides here, and a lot less of it coming out here. Uh, but I, I will say I like this effect piece. I really wish that for any and all future Cyclopses they would give us this effect piece. So that we can have all future Cyclopses doing this same maneuver in uh, any displays that you put up, because that's just really cool. Like this, this is the whole reason why I bought this figure. I don't like Scott. I really thought about not buying this figure. But it's really good. This effect piece is really cool. I wish he was in his classic outfit instead of this X-Factor outfit to make it so he fits better in my display. But it's so cool, I might want to try and put this in. Or, like I said before, I might try and face swap him. Pop out this face, put it on to one of the new faces from the three pack that's coming out. Just so I can get this really awesome effect. All in all, is the figure worth it? If you don't have the previous Cyclops figure, you're not getting the three pack with Gene, which. Why? Why are you not going to get the 3-pack with Jean? It's got Bone Claws for Wolverine. It's got Jean Grey as her actual normal costume, not the Phoenix, for the first time in... Since the Rocket Raccoon wave. And that figure is impossible to find. And it's got Cyclops. With a jacket on. With a jacket on! Like, seriously, your jacket! Yeah. But it's your jacket, though! If you're not getting that 3-pack, you don't have the one from the Warlock Wave because it was really hard to find, then, yeah, grab it. Put him in your display. Otherwise, eh, I... If you really want the effect piece like I do, grab it. Is he worth full price? Eh. All in all, I'm going to say he's a 6 out of 10. He's a serviceable figure, uh, minus the fact that mine's got the messed up face and the messed up uh, waist cut there. That's probably not a standard thing, so I'm not going to say not to get him because of some problems that I've had. Um, and we've actually got a new feature! We've got a new feature here in the Toy Dungeon. And that's so that you guys can see what you're looking at. We have a key square. So that you know just how big Scott is. So that you guys can see just what size you're looking at here. He's just over six inches tall. Closer to six and a half even if we level out his head. 
Yeah, he's right at about six and a half inches tall. Uh, width, he's at about two. So, I hope this helps you guys out, and it hopefully makes these reviews even better for you, the viewer. But, yeah, out and out, just like his height, I'm giving him a six. Is he great? No. Is he horrible? No. Is the effect piece cool? Yeah. Is it worth 20 bucks? No. If you can find it for 10 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, I'd get it for 10. All right. Moving on. We have another figure from the same game he was featured in. Game, you say? But they're the X-Men. They were in cartoons. They were in movies. Why are you talking about games? Because this figure's appearance was known most from the 90s X-Men arcade game. That is... Dazzler. You're not excited. Why are you not excited? You should be excited. It's Dazzler. Okay, so maybe you're not as excited as I am. I was a big fan of playing her in that 90s arcade game. And this costume is based directly off of that appearance. So, I'm really happy to have her as part of my collection. And yeah, she's going to be with a collection of the characters from that game. I'm going to put them all together. because I loved it. Four-player co-op beat em up where you could play as six different X-Men. Good times. Good times had in many, many, many quarters wasted. But, enough about me. Let's get into it. So, once again, we've got our clamshell front with our art here on the side. Our retro packaging, which has that old card back design, which again, I love to pieces. The back, we've got our little picture up here of her and her accessory piece, our uh, little blurb here about Dazzler and the other figures in the wave. Inside, we don't have much here for Dazzler. With, uh, with Iceman, we got that really cool optic black, optic blast effect. I can speak today. With Dazzler, we got the same magic effects that we've gotten. How many times now, Hasbro? How many times? How many times have you reused this one effect just in different colors? I want to know. Want to know, Hasbro? I want to know. At least we've got two of those. Especially since, once I open up this figure, these probably aren't even going to stay with her. And I'll show you to whom they're going in just a few minutes. On the inside, yet again, we've got Dazzler. Uh, this is her 90s look, not her disco Dazzler look. I don't know what's going on with her finger there, but it's bent way backward. That looks really painful with her middle finger being bent back like that. Uh, anyway. Let's take a look at our articulation here. For our head articulation. She can look down actually really well. And can look up just as well. For our shoulder articulation. Okay, we're getting a T-pose. Is it perfect? Not by a long shot, but at least it's a T-pose. We only have, of course, single-jointed elbows with no bicep swivel. I'm not even going to get into it. You guys already know. If you've seen the stream before, you know my complaint here with Hasbro. 
Give your female figures double jointed elbows. Give them bicep swivels. It ain't hard. Trust me, people will be thankful. Which means that her elbow articulation, that's it. That's it. Is that good enough to get out of physical rehab? No, it's not. Is that a good flex? No, it's not. That's it's barely 90 degrees. That's barely 90 degrees. Even if I try and switch the arm around, it, it doesn't get any better. That's it. That's... Are these two things the same? No. No, they are not, Hasbro. No, they are not. We once again have the in and out articulation on her hands. For the ab swivel, Hasbro, we've talked about this. For the ab swivel on this character, we can go this far to the left, this far to the right, that far forward, and that far back. And that's it. We, of course, have no uh, waist cut here. For the hip articulation. Wow, even Cyclops did better than that. <laughs> even Cyclops did better than that. Oh, Youch. For our thigh articulation, we've got... Yeah, we've got a thigh cut. It's a little bit tight on here, but that could just be my figure. We've got, of course, our double-jointed knees. Why is it her double-jointed knee can only go back so far? There's no reason it shouldn't be able to go. Hasbro, you made a lot of poor decisions here on your engineering. And coming two weeks after we saw that beast... And one week after we saw that amazing Nightcrawler, we can tell this was phoned in. For shame. We, of course, have no boot cuts. Just. With all of the articulation it lacks, if I had a nickel for every piece of articulation it lacked, I'd have eight nickels! Seriously. For our feet, we have rocker ankles, he says, with confidence, knowing he doesn't want to break. I don't think this figure has rocker ankles. And if it does, I'm not willing to, uh. I'm not willing to find out by breaking the feet of this figure, so... Ouch! That's as far forward as our feet articulation is going. That's... Uh, at least she can go back on point. So, there's something there. All in all... Is this figure great? No. No, honest to God, it's not. Were it me, were I not the big fan of this game, this game, not even the cartoon, but this game that she was featured so prominently in, were I not a huge figure of this character from that game, pop her in the bin. It's not just lazy mold reuse for the majority of it, it's... It's just... It's lazy, it's bad, there's been a bunch of problems with this. At least she's got these neat effects that we've seen a billion times over. Which, to be fair, I'm not even giving to her. I'm going to be giving these to someone that should have had them in the first place. She's back! Yes, that's right. Our Jubilee figure, as seen two weeks ago...
is going to be the proud recipient of these effects. Because honestly, she should have come with these in the first place. But, that honestly makes for a grand looking Jubilee. As for her, she can get the Disco Dazzler ones if I put her, when I put her in the display. Or I've got enough little pink flame things, I'll have her do one of those. Since she didn't have the effect like this, she threw a pink ball and it made a big explosion. In the meantime, though, Jubilee's looking good with this. As for 90s arcade game Dazzler here, should I get her? If you're a big fan of the game, sure. If you really like the character, sure. Because it's probably hard to find Disco Dazzler now. Although... My local stores have several of them. Please come and buy the Disco Dazzlers from my stores. Please come and buy them. I want them off the shelves so we can get new figures. Pretty please, come buy them. It's from the Warlock Wave. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think so. Unsurprisingly. <laughs> if you want this figure for a display from 90s game... To remake an X-Men Welcome to Die scene. Yeah, sure. Grab her. Grab her for full price? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She's, at best, she's worth ten bucks. I'm gonna say this figures, honestly, it's a three. It's a three out of ten for me. The effect pieces are nice, but I think I probably have these same effect pieces from Scarlet Witch from the Odin Wave. I could have just used them. Honestly, if you want the effect pieces to give to Jubilee, go for it. If you want her for a 90s arcade game display, go for it. Otherwise, seriously, pass. You can pass on this figure and miss absolutely nothing. And that's sad to say. Because I really like Dazzler. Our next figure is another character that I very much enjoy. To the point where... Now mind you, this is the retro wave of figures that we're doing today. I have the original of this figure. From way back in the 90s. I have the original one. And I love it that much. He used to be... The original 90s figure used to be a big prominent piece in my display of my Marvel Legends up until recently when I've gotten newer figures of the same character. But he is, in fact, one of my favorite X-Men. And one of the very first X-Men in the first class, and that is... Bobby Drake, a.k.a. Iceman. Now, you guys probably remember the ice slide that he came with, and the cool feature where you could freeze it with water in it, around his feet, in the freezer and make a block of ice that he can actually slide down on. We'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> but, in the meantime, before we get to that, let's jump into what the figure looks like here. So, of course, once again, we've got our card backing with our clamshell front. We've got the other figures here on the side, our little artistic look at Iceman and the blurb that I'm pretty sure is the same as the one from back in the 90s. And, since you were asking, the first Marvel character ever created was in fact John Hammond, the original Human Torch. Not from Marvel Comics, but indeed from Tales of Suspense. Booyah. <laughs> anyway, and 
To those of you watching this on YouTube, you might be curious, what just happened there? I'm interacting with chat. Chat? You don't stream this on YouTube. I don't. But you can follow me here at twitch.tv forward slash vampire preacher so that you can see these when we do them live before they get memed up by my editor. I know what you're doing. Anyway. So. That means that you can catch this same stream, all memed up, edited up, and more fun, on YouTube at the Toy Dungeon. Just look for this face. <laughs> or you can catch this live at twitch.tv forward slash vampire preacher. You can always check my Twitter when I tell you when I'm uploading both. That's right, my YouTube videos get uploaded every Saturday, and every Sunday at noon, we stream live on Twitch. Enough of me self-plugging. Shameless self-promotion ending. Let's talk about the figure. So, we've got the ice slide. Really has, bro. This is the ice slide. Get into that in a moment. And we've got the figure itself. Ooh, I just noticed that about this, and I'm already a fan. Might not be a fan of this thing, but I am a fan of the fact that they used the... I believe this is the Pizza Spider-Man body, because it has butterfly shoulders. Now, for Iceman, that's definitely a big thing, as we know he usually puts his fists together like this to create those bolts of ice that he shoots out at people. This... this I like. This I like. Alright, let's get into the articulation of this figure. So, for our neck articulation, Bobby's able to look pretty far down, and the man of Medan is able to look up pretty well. Actually, he's able to look up pretty much straight up. That's awesome. Uh,. As mentioned before, he does have the butterfly shoulder, so he can bring his arms back out pretty far. And can bring his arms all the way in as well. Now for me, I'm liking that. <laughs> for his standard shoulder articulation... Better than a T-pose! Actually, to help you guys out here, I'm going to put a little bit of a dark backing behind him so that you can kind of see. Didn't realize that might be an issue with this, uh, that he's a little bit harder to see with the white background. But yes, he is better than a T-pose. For his arm articulation, we of course do have the bicep swivels here. The double jointed elbows. Oh, come on now. There's nothing holding him back. Why, Hasbro? Why can't we get that good flex? It, am I asking for that much? Am I asking for that much for Bobby Drake to be able to do this? I don't think so. Uh, we have no mid-forearm articulation, because he doesn't wear gloves, so that just makes kind of sense. Uh, we have, of course, the in and out wrist articulation here for our ab crunch. 
we can go decently far. And the Hero of Quantum Break can go back a fairly decent degree. We, of course, have a waste cut here. Which is pretty cleverly hidden by his X-Men belt there. Very clever. Not gonna lie. For our hip articulation. It's alright. It's it's better than Dazzler. <laughs> but it's it's only so so. We of course have the We've got a thigh cut. I can see the thigh cut. It's just a very tight thigh cut. For our double jointed knees. All right. That can go back a fair degree. Actually, that goes back perfectly. That's wonderful. Well done, Hasbro. Well done. We do have a boot cut on him, even though he has no boots. No comment. We have, of course, the rocker ankles, which go a painful degree in, and a disturbing degree out. He can go slightly forward with them, and can go all the way on point back. All in all... I'm digging this Iceman. Uh, if you missed out on the previous Iceman, which was not the classic version of him, from the Juggernaut Wave, who's now really hard to find, pick him up. If you didn't get the X-Men First Class one, which always had the chest cavity cave in, then... Yeah, there's a reason I don't display that one. I don't want my chest cavity caving in. Grab this one. This is actually a really good Iceman figure. I'm genuinely impressed. If I can get that other thigh to turn, I'd be even more impressed. But again, I'm not going to go breaking him. Because he's probably going to be going in my display. I like him a lot. However, we got to talk about this. This pitiful excuse for an ice sled... This ain't doing it. This ain't doing it, Hasbro. This is your excuse of an ice sled. No. No. Like I said, this figure back in the day was one of my favorites. So... We're going real retro on you. I don't need to make an ice sled. I've got one. I have the original ice sled for this original figure from back in the 90s. And honestly... I'm probably going to be displaying him just like this. Because that makes me smile in too many ways. If I could figure out a way to get this attached to his hands to make it look like he's spraying down the ice. As he did in the original, well, as he did in Spider-Man and his amazing friends, which is when he was most known for using the ice slide then I'll happily put this on for a hand effect. But for his feet? No, no. This, this I'm using. This I'm using because it makes me so happy. And, so that you all can see, this is the area I was talking about before. Where you could actually fill that with water, freeze it, and then have actual ice on your Iceman's feet to have him go sliding down his ice slide. Now, was it that hard to give us this piece, Hasbro? I don't think it was. But then again, I just went into my hall of figures, grabbed it, and I got it. 
all in all, if you do not have the two previous Iceman Marvel Legends that were released by Hasbro. Now, there was also one released by Toy Biz back in the day. It was a decent figure, but the engineering has shown some age now. There are now four Iceman figures. So, of them, you probably can't find the original Toy Biz one. He's a lot harder to find these days. The display was cool with the sentinel hand frozen in ice that he got to be on. That was cool. The other two that they did, they don't, uh, they don't have any kind of accessories whatsoever. Not even this thing. If you don't have those two and you want Iceman for your team because he's a core X-Men. He's been there since literally the first issue of X-Men. <laughs> Grab this figure. He's awesome. I'm really happy with everything they did with it. I'm going to give this figure a solid 8. Now, why am I not giving it a 9 or a 10? It's pretty much just part reuse with the exception of this here. That being said, it's really well done part reuse. And it looks really good. As, as Iceman, it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with this. I'm happy to put him in my display along with my other X-Men. I'm really happy. All in all, I'm really happy with this one. So far, so far, he is my buy of the wave. So far. However, speaking of, technically the second class of X-Men, but speaking of the 90s arcade game, we've got another figure from that game. I know that she's a fan favorite and the hardest one of this wave to find. So, if you come across her, depending on how this review goes, grab her. You might know, notice I've been using a lot of her and she pronouns here, and that's because we've got Storm, Oro Monroe. It took me a while to find this figure, and <laughs> it took a lot of doing to make it happen, but I did find it, and I'm very happy to have a classic outfit. Not her original outfit, not her first appearance, not her original, but her classic outfit. I'm very happy to have this as part of my collection. So, let's see what we've got here. So, once again, we've got our standard, well... Not our standard, but for this wave, it's standard. The card backing here with our clamshell up front. The other figures in the wave here. Our little artistic shot here, which, again, just reminds me of the 90s figure so much. And our blurb, which, again, I'm pretty positive is the same one from back then. inside of here so the original storm figure had a feature on the back where you scrolled it and it made sparks in the chest this one has these two yellow bits all right <laughs> Now, we've seen these yellow pieces of electricity hundreds of times over now, or at least dozens of times. We've seen them with even infamous Doctor Doom, but they were purple. We've seen them with the first appearance Mohawk Storm figure that they did a few waves ago for the Apocalypse wave. So, we're not getting anything new there. What we are getting... is our classic Storm. Now, as someone who does not have any version of Storm in her classic all-white outfit, this figure made me really happy. I've got her in an all-black outfit, but not in an all-white outfit. It has been 
a number of years since we've gotten Storm released in any form other than that Mohawk. We did get the Mohawk Storm back with the Apocalypse Wave. We did. Prior to that, the last Storm we got was in the... Puck. Puck? Language! No, the Jubilee build to figure wave, where she had her very modern at that time costume. Uh, had her with a mohawk, but with an outfit kind of like this. It was weird. Beyond that, it's been a number of years since the X-Men Classics wave was still around, and Toy Biz did both the X-Men Classics one, which was just a remold of the original one that they had done in the All Black, the one that I own. So... Let's get into the articulation of this figure. Now, I can already tell one thing here. This backward neck articulation, that's it. This mane of hair, this luscious mane of white hair with these beautiful highlights, that's actually a really great wash. They don't often do washes on their figures, but that is a gorgeous wash they did on her hair. Now, for our downward neck articulation, pretty good. Uh, she's not able to look back, but she is able to look down, so I'll take it. She's able to look up a little, I suppose. Now, another interesting thing of note is this is not like it normally is, soft goods plastic. This is actually, I mean, it's technically plastic still, but it's more of a cloth. It's very, very soft, and makes makes it so you can actually pose the figure. For our shoulder articulation. Better than a T-pose. Not quite as good as Cyclops, but better than Dazzler. She, of course, only has single-jointed elbows, which... To save time here. Single-jointed elbows, no bicep swivel, no ab crunch, no boot cut. Come on, Hasbro. Get on it. We'll call that the TLDR version. Because of that, that's as much... That's as much elbow articulation as we're getting. That's it. I realize I once again have the problem of an all-white character on a very light gray background. That's it. Is that that good flex? No, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Our hands, once again, are the standard in and out. I believe? Hello? Hello? She does have wrist articulation, it's just very tight, but yes, it is the standard in and out wrist articulation. Uh, the cape here is held down by a... If you actually look here, there's a tiny piece of rope, tiny piece of string, if you will, just kind of wrapped around her hand to keep her cloak together here. That's clever. We've never seen Hasbro do that before, and I will give credit where credit is due. Good thinking. For our ab swivel, we can go that far left, that far right, this far forward, and actually, a decent degree back. That's the most surprising part, is she can go a decent degree back. No waist cuts. Forgot one. For our hip articulation. Alright. It's about the best we've seen today. We, of course, have a thigh cut for our double jointed knees a 
we once again have the Dazzler problem, where there's nothing here keeping that from going any farther back. But... That's all that we got. We do have Rocker Ankles on her. They can go a great degree in, a painful degree out. Can go forward a slight amount, but can go all the way back on point. With the uh, electricity effects, these are just kind of a roll of soft goods plastic. It just kind of roll around her hand, or roll around her arm here, rather. But it works. It it works for her. It works, and honestly, this figure is probably going to be replacing my current Storm figure, which is that original Toy Biz Storm in all black, because this is the the more classic version, the version that everyone associates with Storm in the all-white costume from the 90s cartoon. All in all, I'm going to say this figure is a 7. It's a 7. They had some articulation choices that they really didn't think through. Some mold choices. Bring back the Moonstone body. Come on now. Some characters need it. She needs it. Emma Frost needs it. The teen body ain't working for her. Bring back the Moonstone body. It was an alright figure, though. It's still gonna go into my display, don't get me wrong. It's still probably going to replace my original Storm from the Toy Biz era. But I'm probably gonna use that Storm's base, because it's this really cool swirling cloud thing for her to stand on, because, yeah, it was really cool. All in all, though, yeah, she's a solid 7. Uh... If you don't have a Storm figure, or if you want the classic 90s version, grab this figure. Honestly, everyone needs Storm in their collection of X-Men. Grab her. She's an iconic member. Grab yourself this Oro Monroe if, and I cannot stress this enough, if you can find her, get her immediately. Because this figure is going for triple the price online. So go ahead and grab it. Our last figure of the wave. I'm probably going to need to keep this around for it. Is actually an all new mold. Wait a minute. Vamp, I thought you said this wave was going to be all mold reuse. Vamp, what are you doing? You're tearing us apart! You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Relax, okay? Just relax. This figure is actually, to my knowledge, an all-new mold. But, it's still a figure from that retro 90s wave, and that is... The Silver Samurai. He's actually the only quote-unquote evil character that we get in this wave. The only antagonist. The only one who goes against anyone in this wave who is not an X-Men but goes against X-Men is this guy here. So, I'm excited for him. He's going to be going with my villains. Let's see exactly what we've got here. Of course, we've got our clamshell front, our backing here, this wonderful card backing, our blurb here, and our blurb here, our little portrait of him there, and the remainder of the wave here, which we've done almost the entirety of, because once again, as has been stated before, we are not doing Stealth Suit Wolverine. You could take that cat to reject and just get on out of here with it. I ain't doing it. Not happening.
inside of here. Yeah, he's he's a little bit hefty. I'll give it to him. I'm not gonna say that he's. I'm not gonna say the magic words. I'm not. You're you're waiting for him. You're waiting for him. If you've watched this stream before, you're waiting for him, and you're not getting him. You're not getting him. We don't have a build to figure, so you're not gonna get those words. Using my wrong eye again, aren't I? We have a katana and wakasashi for him. <laughs> and we've got a mold that makes me really happy. I don't think any of this is part reuse. Honestly, I don't. I know these these shin guards are new. All of the samurai armor here is new. I I know that this uh, forearm piece here is new, so... And I know this helmet's new. I don't know if any of this... I know the armor here is new. If they reused anything at all on this figure, maybe it's like an upper arm piece, a shoulder piece, part of his upper leg. For the most part, if not the entire thing, is brand new molding. And that makes me happy. Well done, Hasbro. So. Let's get into our articulation on this guy. That's as far forward as we're getting. That's all of his forward neck articulation. And that's all of the back. Ouch. Ow. That is barely anything. For our... Shoulder articulation. We're getting a T-pose out of him. That's all we're getting, but it's a T-pose, so I'll, I'll take a T-pose. We, of course, have the bicep swivels. For our double-jointed elbows... You already know it. Is it? No. Nah. No, it's not. It is not that good flex. <sighs> Which means no figure in this wave has given us that good flex. Ouch. We do not have a forearm swivel, but we do have, of course, the wrist swivel, which, amazingly, Hasbro... Hasbro, you done good! You done good, Hasbro! Is the up and down sword cut. Now, we don't have a whole lot of articulation in it, but it is the up and down sword cut. And it's for both hands. It's for both hands. Huh. Now, it's not a whole lot of articulation in it, but it's enough. It's enough to make it matter. Now, we only have an ab swivel with him, too. What an odd articulation choice. After that amazing beast with both the swivel and crunch. Okay. I guess we'll go with this then. We've got this far to the s his left and to his right. This far forward and this far back. For his... Do we have a... We do. We do have a waist swivel for him. For our hip articulation. The best hip articulation we have of the day is Silver Samurai. I wouldn't have thought it. I wouldn't have thought it at all. But here we are with Silver Samurai, Silver Samurai, having better hip articulation than Storm, than Dazzler, than Bobby Drake, than Scott Summers. Oh, 
I don't have words for this. It's... It's Silver Samurai with the best hip articulation. I don't even have words. We do, of course, have a thigh cut here. The double jointed knees. Ooh. That's as far back as they're going. That is as far back as we are getting this double. That is barely 90 degrees. Bro, they're not letting you out of physical therapy after a knee replacement with that. That's not good enough. We got we got too much flash here on the top of his pants. Just too much uh, extra molding there to allow him to really go all the way back. He could barely kneel down in front of his katanas before he goes to slay the Gaijin Menace, probably known as Wolverine. Probably. It's probably going to be Wolverine. He's got a big thing against Wolverine. Maybe it's because Wolverine killed his sister. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's because his sister got dishonored by being with Wolverine. It's a long story, but long story short, he hates Wolverine. We got something in common. We do have boot cuts here. And We've got great inner and outward ankle articulation. That's as far forward as we're going, though, and that's as far back. Uh, this band at the bottom of the shins is really keeping him from going any farther forward or back. Now, I know the Silver Samurai is a righty. So we can see those Tonto and Wakasashi in action. Because, again, he's got the proper cuts for handling swords. He doesn't have a whole lot of articulation up here, but it does matter. And it does make it that much significantly better. Additionally, if you guys couldn't tell while I was doing this, either because my hands are in the way, or because we weren't looking for it, he does actually have a way of storing his katana and his wakasashi on him. And that is this loop here on the side, where you can actually have both going through to make it so that you could store him with them in hand if you want to have him grappling with Wolverine instead of trying to come at him with a katana, which I don't know why you'd do that, but you could. At least it gives you some options, which, if there's any one thing I like having in my figures, it's options for display. All in all, I'm really satisfied with this. I'm genuinely satisfied with this figure. I think they did a great job. I'm Again, I'm pretty sure he's all new molding. I think they did an absolutely fantastic job with this figure. I noticed that I introduced something at the beginning, and I haven't done it since that first figure. And it makes me feel silly having it right here next to me. That's what happens when you have a new element you bring in to your stream. So that we can see just how tall our Silver Samurai is. He's coming in right at about 7 inches. Well, actually, this has got an inch before it gets to the uh, T. So when I said Scott was 6.5, I was wrong. He's only 5.5 inches. And Silver Samurai here is only coming in at exactly 6 just realized that he would need to be down here to be exactly even. Yes, he's coming in at exactly six inches. Uh, all in all, for this figure, I'm really impressed. I think they did some great jobs. They made some unusual choices with uh, articulation and with engineering on him. I don't know why we didn't get an ab crunch on him. It's beyond me. Uh, 
but one as the only villain of the wave he's great two as the only new mold of the wave he's great I'm giving him an eight I'm giving this figure a solid eight is he perfect no he's got a couple things that could be changed is he pretty good yeah he's actually really good I'm actually really impressed with what they did with Silver Samurai, of all characters. Well done, Hasbro. Well done. Now, before I get to our bonus, because yes, if you come this far, you've probably seen that we are going to be having a bonus unboxing at the end of today's stream. So we've done the entire retro wave, with the exception of... Stealth Suit Wolverine, because that ain't happening. That just ain't happening. Before we do our bonus figures, though, I'm going to use this T-Square that I completely forgot I had to show you guys just how big all of the characters of the wave are. So once again, we've got Silver Samurai here weighing in at his respectable exactly six inches tall. We've got Storm here who's coming in at just about five inches, maybe a little bit more with her hair. Um, we're getting closer to five and a half, but that's mostly through hair. We've got our Bobby Drake Iceman, who's coming in at a little bit over five. He's just under five and a half. Our 90s arcade game Dazzler, who's coming in at about five and a quarter inches tall. And as was stated at the very beginning of the stream, the only one we did remember to do this with, Scott here is coming in at about five and a half inches tall. All in all, it was a decent wave. Um... Scott, they could have improved the articulation on, but I do like the optic blast effect. Dazzler, pass. Hard pass. I'm still saying, you know what, I'm going to cheat this wave. Because Storm was great, and yes, if you can find her for regular retail, <laughs> grab her. Because she is super hard to find, she's super rare. And she goes for triple the price of her retail. So, yeah, go ahead and grab that ASAP. My two figures of the wave. That's right. I'm going to be cheating here. Don't at me. I'm cheating. My two figures of this wave are Iceman and Silver Samurai. If you're only going to be getting two figures, I'd say if you're only going to get one, but, again, I'm cheating. If you're only going to get two, get Iceman, get Silver Samurai, get these two guys here. They are wonderful. They're my two eights out of ten for the wave. They got my highest ratings today. They got even higher than Storm, I believe. But, yeah, these are the two to grab. They were fantastic today. Now... That concludes the retro wave of action figures that are out in stores right now. Well, I did say I'd be doing a bonus unboxing, didn't I? And do I look like I'd lie to you? Do I look like I would lie to you? Don't answer that. So, we have a bonus figure. Actually, that's a lie. We have two bonus figures in one big pack. And I do mean one BIG pack. One very, very big pack. So, our bonus figures of the day... I might not be able to get this whole thing on my hand cam. I'm actually going to need to back up. It is the X-Men Days of Future Past box set. Now, this might look huge, and that's because it is. This is our front. If we can get it without the glare, it'd be even better. The front of our package 
is this awesome comic book scene. The side involves actual comic book panels. The back involves what we're going to be seeing today. More actual panels on the inside. And inside of here, these are our two bonus figures of the day. We have our Days of Future Past Wolverine and Destroy it. our Sentinel. So, without much further, let's get into it. Let's see if I can get this Let's See if I can get this whole thing here on stream for you. It it's so big I can't. I mean, I This is massive. <laughs> but, it might not be the most massive Sentinel we're going to be seeing today. So, before we get into this... Now's our time. Before we get into this big, beefy boy... Let's get into our little guy here. He's known canonically as being a little guy. So, let's see what we've got. Ooh. That would explain it. <laughs> I'm trying to get this off. I didn't realize it's got uh, packaging that keeps it secured to the back. Probably because it's absolutely massive. And I do mean that. It is absolutely gigantic. So, let's break out our patented opening tool. Patent patent, of course. All I want to do is make it so that my wonderful viewers can see the cool comic backing. And you're going to just stop me at every turn. Oh! This is a massive hunk of plastic. This, this isn't a big beefy boy. This is a massive boy. And it makes me so happy. So, what I was trying to show you all was the backing of this having actual comic book panels. That's all. That's all I wanted to show you. For our Wolverine. Our Days of Future Past Logan here comes with two additional hands and something most people wouldn't associate Logan with. A gun. Now, 
Now that we've finally gotten it out of the pack. <laughs> oh, that packaging was... That was not fun. Let's get into the figure at hand. So, this is our Days of Future Past Wolverine. He's got the gray in his hair. He's got a jacket on and a shirt and a pair of brown jeans and a belt and has a holster on his side for a gun. Because Days of Future Past was, let's be honest here, an amazing storyline and an okay movie. The road cut was best. <sighs> Those of you who've seen a figure like this before probably saw the Old Man Logan, which has a different head, mostly gray, not uh, with just the gray streak, and with far more wrinkles on his face, but still has the jacket, still has the pants, doesn't have the holster, has a different color shirt, um, and he's got, instead of having gloved hands, he's got just his normal flesh-colored hands. But... It's pretty much the same figure we got there. Thankfully, I didn't get that figure. Because I got this one instead. Let's get into the articulation. For our downward neck articulation. He's looking pretty good. For our backward neck articulation, he can look up a decent degree. Uh, he's not looking up perfectly. Uh, the hair is getting into the way of the jacket back here right here along the edge of the hairline he's getting caught up on the jacket but it's not bad for our shoulder articulation mm, that's all we're really getting is it quite a t-pose mm, not quite but it's it's close it's close enough we've of course got the bicep swivels here for the double jointed elbows. Come on now. Really? There's nothing here hindering us from getting that good flex. And yet, are we getting it from Wolverine? No, no, we're not. The old Snickbub is not giving us that good flex. Which means that unless the Sentinel, which I doubt, is going to be giving us some kind of amazing articulation, not one figure this wave had that good flex. Not one figure this stream had that good flex. We have the in and out wrist articulation, although very floppy. How can it be both floppy and impossible to move at the same time? I'm going to need to be uh, giving him the old hairdryer treatment, obviously, but he does have the in and out wrist articulation. It's just very difficult to move. Uh, but it is indeed there. Since we've got an extra hand, I'm going to pop off this claw, give him this hand so we can see... As where we've had this discussion before. This is an icer pistol. This needle gun should only be used by shield agents, namely Nicholas Fury. This ain't Nick Fury, but this is Nick Fury's gun. Is it that hard to get a Luger? It's not. It's not. Since that is what he uses in the original comic book run, is a Luger. Almost looks like it, but not quite. It's still definitely the Icer Pistol. A very loose Icer Pistol. That shouldn't be moving like that. 
for our ab crunch. We can go a pretty decent degree forward and an all right degree back. We of course have the waist cut here. And for our hip articulation, that's it. That is all the rodent has given us today. Ouch. Oof. Silver Samurai has got them all beat. We do, of course, have the thigh cuts here. For the double jointed knees. He's going back a decent degree. It's not quite perfect, but it is pretty decent. We do not have boot cuts, but he's not wearing boots, so that only makes sense. Uh, if anything, he's got more of <laughs> boot cut jeans. Uh, anyway, that's as far in as we're going, and that's as far out. Uh, the flash around the bottom of the jeans is keeping him from going any further in either direction. He can go that far forward with his cowboy boots that he wears tucked underneath and that far back. He's not going on point, not even close. Um, but at least he's got some articulation to him. All in all, is the figure great? No, no it's not. Um, but it's a Days of Future Past Wolverine. He's coming in at yeah, just about five inches. So he is shorter than Cyclops. He's Actually, the shortest figure we've had today, which is canonically correct, so cool with that. All in all, again, is it a fantastic figure? No. Did you buy it for this figure? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't buy it for Days of Future Past Wolverine, but he's alright. We know why you bought it, though. You bought this set for the same reason I did, and it wasn't for no Wolverine. It was for this absolutely massive monstrosity. I mean, just to look at this thing, it's gorgeous. And if you can't tell, Sentinel under attack. He also has sound effects and. If you look closely, System breach. the eyes Alpha even light up as he's speaking. Now, there are some of you out there that may have seen this figure before, and you wouldn't be wrong, as this is not a new mold. This isn't even Hasbro's original mold. This is a Toy Biz mold. This figure was originally put out in the Marvel Universe line of action figures with a three and three quarter inch version of this Wolverine. Actually, I believe it was just a standard Wolverine at the time. But it was with a three and three quarter inch figure of Wolverine, making it so that teeny tiny Logan, who'd only be about this big, came with this figure, <laughs> who is so massive, he doesn't fit on my hand cam. <laughs> Not all at once, at least. But, because that figure is next to impossible to find. They've reissued it, and here's the thing. You can still buy this figure set right now on Amazon. In fact, that's where I got it from. And I didn't pay the full price that they're asking. I didn't even pay half of it. On Prime Day, I think I paid like 40 bucks. That was it. They usually want 100. I paid like 40 bucks. So keep an eye out for that. For our neck articulation. He's not really moving up and down, but he does move side to side. Uh, he's got a very stiff neck, but as we've seen, he also has electronics going through said neck, so I wouldn't want to move it too much anyway. For our shoulder articulation. Let 
They are very, very tight shoulders. But it looks like he's giving us better than a T-pose. Uh, it's not much better than a T-pose, but it's a little bit better than a T-pose. All right. We also have a bicep swivel here. If you can see underneath here, we have a bicep swivel. We do also have double jointed elbows. And yeah, I figured we weren't. I figured we weren't gonna get that good flex out of anybody and the Sentinel here just proved it. That ain't that good flex. <laughs> That's barely flexing at all, my man. Oof. I'm not sure if we do. I thought we might have had wrist cuts here. It looks like we do. It looks like we've got wrist cuts. Yes, we do. We do indeed have wrist cuts here. Which is actually making it a little bit easier for him to flex. It's not quite the good flex, but it's good enough. Uh, so he does have the wrist cuts. Uh, and of course he does have... Huh. His hands are actually on ball joints. Um... Meaning they don't have the standard in and out or up and down. It's just a ball joint here. That's rather unusual. But as I said before, it is based off of older engineering. As I believe this is taken from a Toy Biz design. However, it is not the Toy Biz Sentinel design. I'll show you what I'm talking about a little bit later. We do have a, we don't have a uh, waist swivel here or a ab crunch because uh, we've got all the electronics here. We only have a uh, waist cut. We don't have an ab crunch, we don't have an ab swivel, we just have an ab or a waist cut. This is actually where our speaker is. I'm pretty sure that means that back here is going to be where our batteries go. Which also means that this whole chest piece, yes, is removable. And that the uh, button up here is actually just a long piece of plastic that presses to a button here on the chest. And we can pop that back. So we can keep up the illusion of the chest armor, which is actually soft goods plastic, all being one piece. I'll finish popping that back together later, because that's not what you're here to see. You're here to see a breakdown of the articulation of the figure. For our hip articulation, we are on the old... Toy Biz ball joints, so he has the best hip articulation of the day. That's right, the Sentinel can do a full split. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say to that. Because of that, he doesn't have the modern thigh cut, but he does have the uh, thigh joint here. We've got the double jointed knees. Ooh. My sentinel friend, my robotic my robotic companion, that that's not enough to get you out of physical therapy, my friend. That's not that's not good. That's that's 90 degrees. Ouch. I do believe he has boot cuts on him. And he does indeed have boot cuts. He does not have rocker ankles, because I wouldn't expect him to. But he does have ankle joints to go so far forward and so far back. 
Uh, you're not really going to get him into a grand running pose. But were you going to anyway? It's a sentinel. They're big old clumsy robots. I'm not really expecting them to go dashing about. All in all. Is this figure set worth it? Between the Sentinel and the... Days of Future Past Wolverine. Well, again... You ain't buying it for Days of Future Past Wolverine. You're buying it for the small child called the Sentinel. This... This thing is colossal. He is not just a big, beefy boy. He towers over the other figures that we've gotten from Hasbro. Because he's not technically from Hasbro. They might have released him, but he's technically a Toy Biz figure. Now, is the set worth the price that they're asking for right now? If you can find it on sale for, say, Black Friday... Cyber Monday. Prime Day. Grab it. Grab it. My guess is you probably don't have a Sentinel to go up against your X-Men, and let's be honest here, you want one. I want one. Or in my case, because I'm greedy like that, I want two. Now this is why I said before that it is not the Toy Biz Sentinel. This is the Toy Biz Build-A-Figure Sentinel. He is the second Build-A-Figure that was ever done with the Marvel Legends line of figures. So, there are some notable differences between the two. Uh, mostly just how they look. This one is a lot more of the classic design from the original cartoon, from the comics. This is a more, at the time, modern design. Uh, they're both valid designs. They're both valid robots. Uh, they're just different. Am I going to say that this is better than this? No. Am I going to say that this is better than this? A little, but... Maybe that's because I'm biased. I I really like this Sentinel, and it was one of the first build figures I ever put together, so I'm very happy to have him in my collection. That being said, now I have two colossal robots to be holding up my X-Men and hunting them down, and that makes me very happy. I can even put them along with a uh, Cree Sentry for a legion of robots to hunt down your various X-Men. The only thing that would make me happier is if they did a Sentinel from the Marvel vs. Capcom series now to really put my collection together. I would show you how tall this guy is with the T-Square, but he's taller than my T-Square. Uh, even putting the T-Square under him... He is taller than the foot of T-Square that I have. In fact, for just this situation, I brought a yardstick. And he is measuring in at just about 17 inches tall. Seventeen inches tall. I will move this down. Hopefully without moving my entire... ...opening pad here for you. Now, of course, we need to keep in mind that there is a one-inch difference, so he's, in fact, sixteen inches tall. Seeing as how your standard Marvel Legend comes in at about 6 inches, the fact that he is 16 inches puts him 
10 inches taller than all of your other figures. Does that mean he's taller than the original Toy Biz Sentinel? Well... Actually, yes. Yes, it does. Because the original Toy Biz Sentinel here is only coming in at about 15 and a half inches. Meaning, our new one is actually taller by half an inch than our old figure. This new guy is a half an inch taller than this guy here. They're different stylistically, but I love both of them. They're definitely both going to be a part of my display of them just grabbing mutants left and right. And it makes me happy to have both of them as part of my display. This, this just makes me so happy. And he, he's tall enough to be sitting down here and still covering my face. So this, this as a toy collector is making me so happy. Well, guys, that about wraps up today. I'm just gonna, just gonna hold them here. It's my son you're talking to. Never speak to me or my son again. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me. Next week, we are going to be doing another unboxing. However, brace yourselves. It has no theme. It has no theme. I've got a bunch of figures that don't quite fit with any one theme. Some two-packs, some exclusives... So, because we don't have a necessary theme with them, we're just going to be doing a big ol' unboxing. It's still going to be the standard amount of figures, but it's going to be less thematic than this one. Sorry, guys. I, I've i got, like, four-plus MCU figures and a couple of exclusive comic figures that... I don't have any other way to unbox, because they didn't come out in waves. They came out in two packs and in exclusive packs. Sorry. I won't let him see. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing as much as I did. Have a fantastic day. Keep it nerdy, guys.